everyone, it's Miss Stewart, and today we're going to be learning about section 2.6, which is on adaptations. Now, the learning objective for today is that you'll be able to describe how organisms adapt to their environment. The essential knowledge that you're going to be gaining is how organisms adapt to environments in short-term and long-term scales, and how different environmental changes can impact the populations of organisms in that ecosystem. And today you're also going to get a chance to practice the data analysis skill where you'll describe relationships among variables in data that's given to you. So the first thing we're going to talk about is this idea of how fitness and adaptations are connected. So remember that all populations have some genetic diversity or variability in their genomes of the individuals. This is at like an individual level. So two different mice in the same population are going to have slight genetic diversity between each other. Now, genetic diversity exists for a few different reasons. One of those is when random mutations occur while DNA is being copied, and this can create new traits. So for example, if this is the original sequence of DNA, if there was an error when it was being copied where this T nucleotide got swapped for a C nucleotide, this DNA is going to code for a new trait and so this offspring is potentially going to have a different trait from the DNA that it originally came from. Now, another thing that occurs is crossing over. This occurs in meiosis, and this is when parent chromosomes create new combinations of genes, and therefore new combinations of genes are gonna be new traits. So if we look at these chromosomes, one came, the blue one came from one parent, the red one came from another parent, crossing over occurs, and this is where the chromosomes are going to swap some genetic information so that by the end of it, you have two different chromosomes because the genes got swapped around. So when those offspring are created, it's going to be new traits that are different from the parents that they came from. So this all leads to adaptations. And an adaptation is going to be a new trait that increases an organism's fitness. Now, when we talk about fitness, we aren't talking about like exercise and how in shape you are. It's going to be the ability of an organism to survive and to reproduce. So if a trait increases that ability, it is increasing the organism's fitness. So the way that adaptation leads to natural selection um, natural selection is the fact that organisms that are better adapted to their environment are going to survive and reproduce more offspring. So individuals with advantageous adaptations are going to pass these traits on to their offspring. Now, individuals without those adaptations are not going to succeed and they're going to die off, which means that over time, the entire population is going to have the advantageous um, trait. Now, this is what's known as evolution. Evolution is just a change in traits over time. So these adaptations, the ones that are advantageous are going to lead to that in the population. Over time, the population is going to change with this trait and the population is going to evolve from where it originally was. So the way that this happens is through selective pressure slash selective force. Now, this is the fact that the environmental condition that kills is going to kill individuals without certain adaptations. So an example that we can look at is if you had different mice that were living in an environment where the ground was maybe like a darker brown color. If you have mice that are tan and mice that are darker colored, the darker colored mice are going to be able to hide in this environment better, which means they're going to be able to avoid being eaten. So. The ones that are easy to see are going to be eaten off. They're going to have less success with survival and reproduction. So over time, it's going to be those darker mice that are reproducing more, which means that over time, this advantageous trait is going to be passed on to more and more in the population. And eventually, this population is just going to evolve to potentially be basically all entirely this darker color. And that's going to be how you have a single adaptation through natural selection, we see evolution over time. And the selective pressure in this example is going to specifically be like the hawk is the pressure, and then the color of the ground is going to be this environment. 
but this hawk is kind of pressuring this natural selection to occur. Now we have environmental changes that can lead to evolution over time. So an environment that an organism lives in is going to determine which traits are adaptations. So traits that are advantageous in a salt marsh are not going to be advantageous in a tundra ecosystem. So it definitely depends on the environment that organism is living in, whether or not the traits are going to be adaptations that are advantageous. So as environments change, different traits can also become advantageous and old traits might become disadvantages. So for example, if we have a drought that comes into an island, that's going to kill off finches with smaller beaks because larger beaked finches can crack shells or crack the shells of seeds. And so being able to have bigger beaks is going to make it that you can open up these seeds and still get food and still survive. So if this drought kills off all of the finches with smaller beaks, that means that the larger beaks were going to be an advantageous adaptation for this specific environment. So if we, we can actually see this occurred in the mid to late 70s, 1970s, we saw this occurring in a bird species on an island, there was a drought in 1977. And if you looked at the average beak depth before, it was around nine and a half millimeters. Now, after the drought, we saw that the average beak depth was over 10 millimeters. And we started with 751 birds, a bunch of them died because by the end we were only left with nine birds, but we can see that the average beak size increased. And this is gonna be an example of how this population was evolving over time. Now this evolution occurred quickly because of a drought, but this is a real life example of how we can see this environmental change then causing this evolution to occur in the species. So when we're talking about the pace of evolution, the more rapidly an environment changes, the less likely that a species in the environment will be able to kind of slowly adapt to those changes. Because remember, we're talking about like changes in DNA and traits and those being passed on. That's not just something that happens super quick. It takes generations for that to be occurring more frequently. So if the environmental change is happening too rapidly, many species are either gonna have to migrate out of this environment or they're just going to die off completely. So an example of this might be if the ocean warms too quickly, many species of fish are not gonna be able to migrate to cooler areas because they're gonna just run out of oxygen and suffocate first. So when we are seeing more genetic diversity in a population, this means that they are gonna be better able to adapt to environmental change. And that's because the more genetic diversity you have, the higher likelihood it is that some individuals are going to have some good mutations that are going to give them advantageous traits for this new environment. Now, another thing to be aware of is that the longer the lifespan of the organism, the slower the rate of evolution. So if we look at bacteria versus humans, bacteria and viruses can adapt and evolve in a span of days because they multiply so rapidly, you can go through multiple generations of a bacteria or a virus within a few days. Humans, however, we have average lifespans of like 70 years. So it takes thousands to millions of years for human evolution to occur. So this is how we can see kind of the difference in the rate of evolution based on how the lifespan of those organisms and how quickly they're going to be able to reproduce and pass on traits. So this is going to be your practice FRQ for 2.6. You're gonna be practicing the skill of describing relationships among variables and data that you have been given here. So if you look at this table, we're gonna be looking at the Daphne Island beak size versus the Santa Cruz Island beak size in millimeters. So this data table is going to show the beak size of 20 finches from two different islands on the Galapagos. So I want you to look through this data and I want you to describe the difference in beak size 
between the two islands. Then you're going to make a claim about the reason for this difference in beak size. Now remember with your claim, you should be connecting evidence from this data chart, and then you should also be bringing in scientific concepts that you just learned about to kind of explain the reasoning for this difference in beak size. So that's your practice FRQ for 2.6. Those were your notes on 2.6, which was about adaptations.